Heavenly Father, we ask the blessing on the reading of your word. May your Holy Spirit be our guide today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Revelation 14. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Sion, and with him an 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. So uh, remember, we've talked about these 144,000, 12,000 male Jewish virgins, and uh, this is where it explains why they're male, male uh, virgins in this passage. But 12,000, uh, earlier talked about 12,000 from each of the different tribes of uh, Israel. And uh, really, there's 14 tribes of Israel. Sometimes some are under judgment. Gad isn't mentioned. I can't remember. I think Simeon is the other one that isn't mentioned in there. I may be wrong on that. Uh, but there's 12,000 from each of those tribes represented. And that 12,000 times 12 is 144,000. And uh, the Lamb is, of course, Jesus Christ. And I heard a voice from heaven as a voice of many waters and as the voice of great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which are not defiled with women, for they are virgins. It's very clear. These are they which follow the Lamb with, whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being firstfruits unto God and to the Lamb. And their mouth was found no, no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue. Now, there are different parts of the gospel. There's the gospel of the kingdom. Uh, part of the gospel, the good news, is that Christ is going to come and rule and reign. He's going to keep his word with the nation of uh, Jerusalem, uh, or nation of uh, Israel, excuse me, in and rule in Jerusalem. Uh, and and that's, that's part of the good news. It's the gospel of the kingdom that they first went out and preached in Matthew. And, and there's the gospel of the grace of God. Uh, this is another part of the gospel. It says, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of judgment has come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. So part of the gospel is we should have a reverent fear for the God. There should be a fear. The fear of the Lord is beginning knowledge. First, we should come trembling, understanding we deserve hell. And when we do, we can find the grace of God. We can look to him and trust him as savior and, and, then as, as children, we should come like uh, fearful children, knowing that he can discipline his children. He could take us home if we're in sin. We don't want to be living in sin. Uh, but there's nothing we can do to save us. There's nothing we can look at in our lives to see if we're saved. The only thing we can look at in ourselves to see if we're saved is what are we trusting in? If you're trusting in you plus something else, you haven't trusted salvation. Now, I'm going to try to do this uh, less in some of the videos, but I think it's still important. You know, this hand represents you you and me. This hand represents, or this wallet represents sin. God loves us, but he hates our sin, and we all have sin. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. We all have a death to pay because of sin. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We have sin. We can't go to heaven because of our sin, because we have to be perfect to go to heaven. Our sin separates us from God. We can't get to God because of our sin. We can't work it off. It's not in part doing better to get to heaven. When we repent, we have a change of mind that we can't do better. We can't keep his laws and we have to turn to Christ. The good news is that Jesus Christ came down as a man, God in the flesh, and Christ died for our sins. He died on the cross. God gave his son, uh, he gave us a gift in his son, and whosoever believeth in him, when you put your trust in what he did on the cross, he pays the death you owed. He rose again, and now you cannot go to hell because you have no sin to pay for when you trust him. He gives you his righteousness. It's called imputed righteousness. And now you can go to heaven because you've trusted him. That is uh, the good news. And when we have that reverent fear, we understand I deserve hell. What do I do? What must I do to be saved? The Philippian jailer said that. They said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ 
and ye shall be saved. When you put your trust in what he did, there's no works. There will be people who, after they trusted Christ, they didn't live as well. And if we're honest, we, we don't live as well as we should. We sin every day. We may not even know that some of the sins we do. We're still not perfect. We should be working on our sanctification. He doesn't want you living in sin. He, he wants you to recognize when you recognize, yep, I'm in sin. It separates you from God in terms of your fellowship, but you cannot lose your salvation. So verse 8, and there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all the nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Now, um, I do believe that this Babylon, uh, it says that great city, there's a city that rules the things of the world. And what, what is that? What is that great city? We'll talk about that in a minute. I, um, let's keep going. Verse nine. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, "If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in their forehead or on their hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of his holy angels and the presence of the Lamb." It, it's eternal uh, when people take that uh, take that mark it's too late um, the Babylon that's fallen that's fallen I, I believe it's the city you know in, in the Vatican that that will have fallen um, you know again I mean no no offense to uh, someone out there who is who is Catholic but uh, the Vatican Roman Catholicism does not follow, uh, biblical Christianity. If you read in its uh, catechism, you can find that it says Mary is the co-redemptrix with Jesus. Uh, Mary had sin, according to the Bible. She needed a Savior. She cries out, oh God, our Savior. She's a wonderful woman of God, a wonderful servant of, of God, but it's where Jesus got his humanity. Uh, she wasn't a co-redemptrix because she didn't die on the cross. She's not a mediator. Uh, the mediator for, there's a mediator of one. There's one God and one mediator between God and man, the man, Jesus Christ. Jesus is your mediator. If he's not your mediator and somebody else is, and you're asking someone else to pray for you, not saints, not somebody else, Jesus is the only one that can pray for you because he's the only one that can save you. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. So those things you can read in uh, the catechism of, of the Roman church that they're not teaching what is biblical Christianity. So uh, here is the patience of the saints, they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the saint that they may rest from their labors and the works, and their works do follow them. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and his, in his hand a sharp sickle. So, of course, Jesus is the judge. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to them that had a sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust his sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth, and cast it to the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse's bridles, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. When the tribulation starts, there will be war, but that, that uh, city will fall, because the Antichrist, uh, when it talks about uh, the a woman that rides the beast, that woman, I believe, is coming out of the Vatican and is going to be in control of the Antichrist for three and a half years. And then he's going to uh, make war against that woman. Uh, we'll see that 
uh, in an upcoming chapter, and he's going to throw off uh, her rule, and he's going to rule for that next last uh, three and a half years, tracking down anyone who is uh, trying to follow the Lord, and people are going to be in hiding and trying to uh, just survive. And if they don't take that mark, it will be a scary time. And again, when I heard these things as a kid, you know, it, it scared me. But I think, you know, uh, I, I know one young lady uh, said she was listening about the revelation. And it was scaring her. But then uh, and she put her trust in Christ. And uh, she told me one day I did it, you know, and, and I said, what? She goes, I trusted him. And that's salvation. So if you have that salvation, all these things, you don't have to fear uh, falling into these things. So you might say, why, why are you going through this? I, I recently went through it in church, but I still think there's a lot of kids out there who have these questions. We're going through some interesting times, and a lot of people think, well, you know, we could, you can't fall under the wrath of God. And there's no reason to then fear man, because the worst thing is you can be, uh, you can go home early and be with the Lord. So trust the Lord. Trust that he'll help you through uh, tough times. Continue to uh, look to him when things are difficult. And Lord bless you with the reading of his word today.